So we're here with Rabbi Moshe Yosef Engel, interviewing him, the fourth part of an interview. Rabbi Engel has been a shliach for the Rebbe in Long Beach, California for 54 years, and now we'll talk about when you married, and I don't know if you were in Kailul for a year, and then you went a shlichus, and tell us about that, early years of your shlichus. That's, that's fine, it, it yeah, sees yeah. you. I got married, lived in Crown Heights for a year. You were in Kailu? Kailu, yeah, I was in Kailu. Yeah. And then I had a few offers for Schlichusen. Which, do you remember where? I remember three of them. Someone just asked me this yesterday. Okay. One was Montreal. Montreal for who? For Battle... Battle... Okay. One was in Detroit. Okay. One was in Long Beach, California. Okay, you wrote to the Rebbe. All the things. All the hits are us. And the Milas and Kosoyanis that I saw in each. And I said to them, I'm asking the Rebbe for a drama, and I'll do which I think the Rebbe chooses. Underlined or circled, I can't remember, Long Beach, California. And who asked you? Was Rabbi Bukarski or Rabbi Kunin? Don't you remember? I mean, they were both my bosses right. in one sense. And your job description was educational director? No, no, my job description was to be a teacher. Teacher at the school, Hebrew Academy. Yeah, the school before I had 14 kids. That was the first year. And now I was going to have 32 kids. When was the first year? 69, and you came in 70. Right, so it's the second year of the school. The school, right. And the first year, was in the JCC, they rented the room. The second year, when I came, we had just got our building. You mean the Westminster, the Yeshua? No, no, no. no the Shul. In Long Beach. In the Long Beach, yeah. No. Uh, Dr. Moskowitz was involved in that, exactly on that shore. Did he buy the building? I do remember for his son's bar mitzvah, he remodeled the building. That I And I came out to be a teacher, but in my mind, I came out to be a shlich. Yeah. So I was very into the shlichas part and into the teaching part. That's the truth. And so what, what grade did you have? First grade. First grade, wow. First grade for close to 40 years. 40 years you taught first yeah, grade? Yeah, said that there were some years I taught first and second. And some years I taught just first, and the other half a day was assistant principal. For a few years, I didn't have years. But I started doing projects on my own. Like, for example, I started a, a class, a learning class. I called it The Layman Asks. This went on for 20, 25 years. Once every two weeks in somebody's house, I would come. First years, it was just a, uh, just questions and answers. But after a little while, I saw it was always this new people came and asked the same questions. So I made a topic. I made a topic, whatever the topic was, I publicized the topic. And. Uh, so it wasn't just for parents of the school. Right, but, but it was basically parents of the, the school. school. That's who we publicized it to, so. Right. That's when I got a little bit involved in Mitra. Because at the end of, I don't remember, one, one year, first year, second year, third year, I don't remember. Right. I decided it's time to tackle Mitra. To build a Mitra? No, no. To tackle, to teach about Mitra. Oh, 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 to teach women about Mitra. To teach couples. Couples. Well, my, my the classes were couples. Right. The problem was that all the people were about in their forties when I was twenty three, twenty four. Yeah. Good. And and I I uh, that was uh, you know, every, every time we gave a class, you prepare, prepare fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, an hour. 
This was the class that I prepared the most in my life. I gave two lectures, and I think I prepared 27 hours. And what, what, how did I prepare? I got every book there was available on the which in those days was almost nothing. Right. Example, Edge of Roses was there for my era by Norman Lamb. So I read the book, and anything that I felt that I could get across, and Del B. McCombolic, I underlined. And if I felt that I could say it, but they, you know. Right, they wouldn't take, take to it well. So the final, from those two lectures, maybe I'll tell you the name of the lectures, from those uh, two lectures, one couple came over to me at the end, and they said, we want to hear more about it. So I met with them, told them more about it, they didn't try it. Did you already have a mix in Long Beach at the time? No. So they said they're going to try it. And as I said, what's prompting you? I can't say what's prompting you. They said that we try everything. I understand. And does this sound like... It sounded like fun. <laughs> Like Something like, good like, to explore. To explore, exactly. By the way, I told the lady when she went to the big I told her after, not, not then, but she should tell me how, how the experience was. Neither one day, yeah. she said, how was the experience? She says, Rabbi, it was horrible. Oh, I, I made up with them. No matter what, sit, you're keeping it for six months. That was me. She says to me, it was horrible. I said, what was horrible? So she said, Rabbi, is your husband allowed to drive you to the big club? She never drove freely at night. She never what? Drove freely at night. Freely? Freely. Oh, the, the highway, right. At night. So she wanted her husband to drive her. No. So she assumed her husband cannot drive her. Right. So she drove and she sit her all the way. Right. She was scared. And then when she went into the mikvah, we didn't tell her, or we forgot to tell her that uh, the lady from the mikvah always speaks Yiddish. And she only spoke English and, and she was trying, and we, I think we must have forgot to tell her to make a bracha. Or the lady was trying to tell her, it was, it was a mess. So I said to her, look, you promised six months, six months it will be. We'll go over the details. Yes, your husband could drive you to Nick, because don't forget, that was a 30 mile drive. It wasn't that a Wait, to LA. To LA. So, yes, he, and yes, here's a brother. Yes, here's a. By the time she came out the second time, and I met her again a while later, she says to me, Rabbi, this is the secret to Jewish marital happiness. Um, so I said to her, We've got to make a group that publicizes this. So we made a group, she and I. It was called the Jewish Family, Jewish, nice to all Jewish family institutes, something like that. And she and I started getting lectures for this. She was really, really into it. She became a Lubavitcher? No. Okay. Uh, but put it this way, she said to me once, right at the beginning, she said, I, how can I use a mikvah? I don't even keep kosher. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Anyway, but you know, I answered, I told her, listen, Mason, do you keep kosher? She said, it's kind of. So I said, it's the same. It's the same kind of. And so, so from that she, time on, you, you, you were involved with mikvah? Yeah, all your, all your shlichas, all the 50, most of the years? No, 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 no. I wasn't involved. I was a teacher. 
I was I know that I know that he said as you know oh, the okay. other sleepless. So, so I started it first I the other sleepless was I gave this class that the layman asked right. for many, many right. years. And at the end of it, actually it wasn't at the end of it, I think it was at the end of the first year. I just You went into the mikvah. the mikvah. How long did that last for? Several years? No, 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 just two, two months. Oh, oh, so it's not that you kept this organization, this work of no, oh, oh, this little organization, she and I said, oh, okay. yes. we kept it going probably for six months to a year. Uh -huh. In other words, we brought in speakers from, I remember we brought in one lady, somebody told us to call her, and she, she got up, oh, and I purposely didn't go to any lectures. So this chase this I forgot. Right. I was she she was there by all of them and I was one of them. And, and um oh yeah. So one lady got up I can't remember her name now. But she was I was referred to two women, audacious speak. Right. So they came. And this lady gets up and she says I love tennis. I play tennis. I have tennis medals all over my wall. I, and she goes on and on about it. Yeah. And, she, and then she says, and I use the mikvah. <laughs> it blew everyone away. It blew them away. So now tell me a few other things. I remember I was once with our yeshiva in the mid 80s. Early 80s, 82 or so, 182 in your community for Shabbaton. So I remember a few things. One thing I remember that each year the Yarki Kala at the Yeshiva, you brought a group of people. Oh. I remember that. I don't know if I brought it. I don't know if you brought it. I came. Yeah. I also remember Dr. that. Was right, right. I also remember that you, I think, had a Dafa Yemishi very early in the morning. So it's so interesting. That, that was for a little while we started learning the doctrine. I think it was, and it was very early because. Because you had to talk about Yeshiva. It was like 6 30, it was like 5 30. I know, I know, I know. But but you you were teaching it, right? No, I don't know. Oh, no, you weren't teaching it. From a, from a tape. Oh, from a tape. Uh huh. Um, tell me about the. The way you see, see the development of the Chabad community in Long Beach from the beginning when you were there, later, how it's today, could you say something sure. about that? Sure. At the beginning, we were a, uh, a unique creation. We were invited to, or we invited ourselves, we asked them to invite us to an evening with Chabad at Temple, so and so and them. And each time we did that, one more person <laughs> joined us. Right. That's when they stopped inviting us. <laughs> that's when they stopped inviting us. But that, that was very successful. We had those kind of meetings. And then, uh, the fun, different, different things. I'll give you an example. Purim came up. Okay? So we wanted to send, this was a first year, I said, we wanted to send uh, Shalom Hanas. So we packed nice, uh, at that time we had 32 kids, it was probably 20 pounds, I'm not sure. I, I was one of the bus drivers. Rabbi uh, Garcia drove for once, and I drove once. Anyway, so the goal was that as I dropped off each kid, I gave them this big package and put on the table if their parents were there. The next day we got calls and calls and calls. Why were you sending us uh, food baskets? We're not poor. Yeah. They didn't even have a has saga of what Shalapanas was. It has no understanding of what, no, uh, what no. Purim's about, right? Right. Sending gifts. Uh, but sending food gifts. Food gifts, and right. So they thought we were like maybe they needy and well, by a year or two later, there were probably hundreds of Shalapanas sent all over. Everybody sent this. They're sending different people and so on. It became a big thing, shop one. All from that. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so can you talk about, about the development of the Chabad community in Long Beach? That's what I was asking you about. Okay. And how you see, you know, this stage, because I know it went through stages. 
at least that's the way we as an outsider observe it. Some who studies Chabad, um, it seems to me there was there were changes from the way it was at the beginning. The way it was in the beginning was a small place. Uh, even when I came, when we had 32 kids, and next year when we had 84. No, you're talking about the school. I'm talking about the Anash community, the Chabad community, and the Bali Chuva. I want to. I really want to talk about that. Okay. The answer is we started having classes. One very successful class was held in Downey. I think it was in Dr. Dower's house, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And Dr. Dower, uh, oh, there was a Chavura. Uh, because that was very popular in the 70s. Exactly. And two of the people of the Chavura were Dower and his wife, and Lovish and his wife. And they became Shemr Shabbos, yeah. became Akalovish, yeah. became, became the whole works. Right. And then we had different kind of classes. I did all kinds of classes, like I said. The, the layman asked. And so, so it was your, because there was Rabbi Bukarski at that time, there really probably was Rabbi Schusterman. Well, when it was. But when you, when you're, you're the one that was, no, who was this responsible yeah, adult education? It was no one official, but I, I took on. You the, took a whole lot of that, right? Right. Okay. And, and that was the classes that I gave, and that yeah. was this, this was a Thursday night every two weeks. One week it was me, and one week it was, I don't know, Shisman or Bikarski. I think it was Bikarski. I think this was before Shisman. Okay. And from that, these people became food. Right, okay. These but you made a lot, there were many, I remember in 1981 or 82, there was a, a whole community of Bali right, Chuba. Right, right. We had a whole community of Bali Chuba. So you, 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 it, could we say that it was really, with all honesty, it was your, you made those balchubas? No. In no, honesty? It was all together? It was all together, yeah. We all, whatever projects we made, here's an example, okay? The, the, uh, the, the, one, the JCC had every year uh, an Israeli day or Israeli whatever. I set up, I set up a film. This actually was the first year I was there. First or second year. It was Hanukkah. No, no, I'm not saying about two things. Hanukkah, we were, the school was putting on a play. So I set up a film. I remember this guy walked by and asked me, would you like to put on a film? I said, no, why not? But uh, I had to come. I said, listen, I'll still be here. If you want, you can come back. He comes back a while later and said, why do you want me to put on a film? Well, why did he care about it? So that started a whole conversation. And then he said to me, I, why did I never learn this? I went to Hebrew school, I, you know, whatever you went to. So I said, I don't know, but if you get me and people together, I'll give, I'll give a class and we'll start with this. That's when the layman asks. This man, Coyle, unfortunately, passed away a few years later, a young, a young man who was a pharmacist. But because of that, the, it started a, a whole thing that I was going every, I mean, there were times when, three times a week I was out in the, in the evening. Uh -huh. Okay, so tell but, me how that, that but, but I wasn't the only one. Rabbi Pekarski was learning with people. I'm just in a, how did this? How did it develop the community? Continue? How did no? Were there more black, you know, coats no, and hats? Okay, okay, no, no. We didn't push for black coats and hats. We pushed for people to be from. Yeah. And then at a certain point, people from other communities started moving in a little bit, and that's when the community became <laughs> black. Right. Right. So how how did that have an impact on? Um, the your work sounds like you and your fellow shluchim weren't really interested in that, but it happened. No, 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 that was not true. I gave the wrong impression. No, uh -huh. we were we were supportive of it, and we were, but that's not what we were aiming for. 
In other words, people moved in from a food community. Our work was mainly dealing with fried people. Uh -huh. The whole school was, I think at that point, after three or four years I was there, I think once they took a poll or something, from the whole school, there were 5% that were Orthodox. Mm -hmm. One second, please. Oh.